Want a website with unmatched power, speed, and control? Try Bluehost Cloud, the new web hosting plan from Bluehost, built for WordPress creators by WordPress experts. With 100% uptime, incredible load times, and 24-7 WordPress priority support, your sites will be lightning fast with global reach. And with Bluehost Cloud, your sites can handle surges in traffic no matter how big. Plus, you automatically get daily backups and world-class security. Get started now at Bluehost.com. Editing long podcasts like this or webinars for social is time-consuming. Simplified AI Clips uses AI to turn your lengthy videos into short, viral clips. Create shareable content from your recordings in a few minutes. Built for small businesses and marketers looking to save time and boost engagement, visit Simplified.com and use Anika 30 to save 30% today. Welcome to Your Brand Amplified, the podcast where we interview marketers, publicists, and brands to learn their stories, what makes them tick, and tips and tricks that make a difference. I am Annika Jackson here with Your Brand Amplified, and I'm so thrilled to welcome Kendra Swalls to the show today. Kendra, thank you so much for participating in this podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to chat with you today. I am too. I know we've been trying to coordinate for a while, and I just really want to hear your story because you're a mom, a photographer, an educator. You've done, met, like me, some pivoting in your time. So please share a little bit about your journey with us. Yeah. So um, like you said, I started off as a teacher. That was kind of always the path I had laid out for me. I had come from a family of a ton of educators. I just, that was what I envisioned. And so I got my undergrad in elementary. I taught for about seven years and then decided I was like, there's something uh, like, I'm just not fully feeling like this is where I'm meant to be. Mm-hmm. And so I kept searching, searching, searching. I went back and got my master's degree in education. I thought maybe I want to be a curriculum director. And I started writing curriculum for small school districts. I really fell in love with that. Um, around the same time, I was like, I'm going to pick up photography. Like this was <laughs> sort of a, like, I wouldn't even say a hobby. It was just something I loved as a kid. Like I love taking pictures. My mom and I both have that kind of skill set of like, we just, love capturing moments. And so I was always the kid with like a little disposable camera or my Polaroid or whatever I could find. And so I thought, you know, it'd be kind of fun. Like my husband bought me a digital camera for Christmas one year. And I thought, let's get into this. And, um, it was just like a little creative outlet. And then, um, I started really and started spending more time focusing on in the evenings, like less on curriculum and lesson planning and education and more on like photo shoot ideas and learning all these different techniques. And I really kind of dove head first into that. And, um, in 2012, I was pregnant with my first daughter teaching full time, um, going through the final semester of my graduate school. And I thought, Hey, why don't I create this, turn this into a full fledged business? Cause you know, I'm a little bit crazy like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so I started my company called Paisley Lane Photography, and I really just kind of went out and started taking pictures of anybody and everybody that would let me. Um, and it started to kind of grow. And then I started getting into more of the marketing side of business and learning sort of how a business runs, not just how to take great photos and help people see them. And that sort of matched with the analytical side of my brain that I was teaching, you know, I was working on, I was a math coordinator at the time. And so like the mathematical side of my brain was like, Ooh, let's look at this from like a numbers perspective and an organized perspective. And, um, yeah. So once I started doing that, my business really took off. And in 2017, um, right after I had my second daughter, I said, you know, I'm going to give this a shot. I'm going to go full time and I can always go back to teaching if I need to. I had an incredible principal and um, assistant superintendent that I worked with that were like, if you ever need to come back, you can. So I had a little bit of that safety net and I went all in and it was amazing. It, I mean, in the first year, I kind of, I think I almost doubled what I was doing the year before. And through that, I had other people reaching out to me, just kind of saying like, Hey, can you help me grow my business. Like, tell me your, like, what did you do? What were you doing to let you quit your job? And I started doing like small group and one-on-one kind of mentoring. 
Um, I was saying the same things over and over again. So I was like, let me try blogging. Realized really quickly that wasn't my skill set. So then I decided to start a podcast. Um, and that could have led to where I am today, where now I have my podcast, I do one on one coaching, I have some online programs. Um, it's just sort of all been this path that I never thought would happen. I just kind of allowed things to come as they came and it's led me to a really great place. So now I get to infuse my love of business with my natural ability of teaching and it all falls together really nicely. Awesome. And are, and you're still running your photography business or I am. Yeah. So it's become a little bit more of the part-time, which is nice because now I get to be a little more selective in what I, what I get to take on. But it's still my fun, creative outlet that I get to have, which I really enjoy. Oh, yeah. Uh, when you were talking about that, it might, made me think of my daughter, who is very math and science, but also very creative. You know, she's a, an excellent artist and does a lot of other creative pursuits. And you really have to use, I mean, that's that creativity does come from that side of your brain. Yeah. Um, and then also, kudos, because we always need people like you, people who are willing to take the photos, people who... You know, the friend who shows up with the camera as you started, like when you were younger and just doing it as a hobby, um, yeah. because I think a lot of times we forget to get that good photo and like, oh, I really wanted to capture that moment because that way you have it to look at and you have that memory of that person. And I know sometimes it like with the way that the world works now and everything's online and we move. I've lived in different places, so I don't see the same friends, but it's great for me to be able to see their pictures and see what they're doing. Um, and yeah. then took it a step further and made it into, you know, a real business um, and doing events and helping people capture those special moments in their lives. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm my best friend I've known since I was five. Mm-hmm. And she would probably say that I took too many photos that she wishes <laughs> didn't exist oh, these no. days, but, but no, it's oh definitely, and it, that's kind of what drew me to it is I used to love looking through old photo albums of like that my grandparents had, or that my family members had. And I was like, I just, I don't ever see that going away. I think we're always going to crave and want to preserve those moments in whatever form and fashion that that is. I still, every year I print photos, I create a little family yearbook where every year I sit down and I put all of our photos from the year into an album and I have it printed and we have them all on our shelf. And so I hope that the printed photos continue to stick around, but at least we have, you know, so many ways now to capture our every single day moments and look back on those, which is really cool. Yeah, definitely. And one of the things that you talk about in your bio and when, you know, when people are searching you up is that you take, help women take their businesses from survival mode to success mode, um, using the relationship marketing strategies that have been the foundation to your business success. So, and I think that's a a common position. People know they want to start something, but they don't really know how, and then they get panicked and, oh my gosh, what's my next step? So will you walk us through that process a little bit of like, when somebody comes to you, I'm imagining that you'd get people in other stages too, but it sounds like that is one of your big customer personas is yeah. that person who's like, I have this idea. I don't know what to do. Yeah. The overwhelm. That's the big thing is like, and I remember that feeling so well in my, when I was starting my business of just like, I, I didn't even know what I didn't know yet. Yeah. That was the part. <laughs> it was like, there's so much you don't know. And there's so much that you feel like that you're missing. It's like everybody else has this insider secret that you don't know about. And you're like, how do I get that? So yeah. So a lot of times when clients come to me, they're in that phase in their business where either they haven't started the business yet because they're kind of in this analysis paralysis of like, I don't even really know what my first step is, or they have started a business. And then it's kind of hit this wall of like, okay, I've done all the things that I sort of thought I knew what to do. And now I don't know what to do next. Mm -hmm. And so what I do with them is I really sit down and look at, okay, let's look at what your goals are. I think that that's the biggest thing is you have to sort of have an end goal in mind. So you have to have, you know, for example, someone who is brand new, getting ready to launch a business, you know, what do you want your business in your, to look like a year from now? What do you want it to feel like? And not even so much like how much income do you want to make, but what do you impact do you want it to have on your life? Do you want more time? Do you want more money? Do you want more flexibility? Do you want all of the above? 
And then we kind of work backwards from there to go, okay, how can we help you get there with the least amount of resistance possible? Because that's the part where a lot of people, they get into it and then they kind of have all this resistance and all this struggle. And they're like, oh, it's just forget it. It's too much, you know, and they get out. And so my goal is to help them kind of handhold and walk them through like, okay, now you did this gold star for you. Now let's move (laughs) on to step two and let's get another gold star. You know, I kind of, I really do approach it like I would with my students when I was teaching is you have to take it one piece at a time. And I think a lot of times, especially with social media and the internet, we are just like a fire hose of information all the time. (laughs) And it's like, okay, I want to start an email list and I need to create a sales funnel and I need to have Pinterest and Facebook and Instagram. And it's just like, oh my gosh, it's so much. So just being able to kind of block things out and say, okay, let's just start with getting you a really solid landing page or website where people can come to, to get information. And then once that's set up, let's move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And that helps. I think a lot of people, especially like the the creative minds, the ones who are like, Mm -hmm. I know I want to create this thing. I don't know how to make a business out of it. I'm able to come in and help them make a business out of this creative idea that they have by making it a little bit more strategic, but not feeling like there's this fire hose of content in your face. Yeah, that is, the, as you said, the overwhelm. That's one of the hardest things for any business owner because we're like, we have to do all these things. But I've, you know, I've had different businesses. I had an agency, I merged with somebody else. I left that and now I've restarted my own journey, my own agency and my, I have my podcast. But something I'm doing differently this time is exactly what you're saying. I'm like, I'm not going to let myself get overwhelmed with everything at once. I'm going to be very methodical and make sure this is set up, this is set up so that I feel more at peace. And even if that means like the process is a little slower, I don't bring on clients as fast. That's okay. Because I want to make sure that this is set up for success for the long term, not just for the short term. And we all get inundated with so much information and like, you need to have a Facebook group because it's going to do this. Well, it might not work for your business. Right. So yeah. have, you, have you had situations where people came in and worked with you and then realized that they didn't actually want to start that business? They wanted to do something else? Yeah, I've had some that have come in kind of with the business already going, like they have started this thing. Um, and like one example I can think of is she thought she was like, okay, I'm going to go into this and I want to do like one-on-one like life coaching kind of situation. Mm -hmm. And so we got into it. We started working on a plan. Um, We started really going into like, what are the parts of your business that you really enjoy the most? Mm -hmm. And we realized, or she realized, and we kind of realized together that I was like, I don't know that the one-on-one model is going to work best for you because it sounds like it's not even so much the life coaching that you want to do. She's really, she has a um, project management background. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, she's amazing at organization and just kind of knowing how to like time things out. Like, okay, let's, you know, map this out. And, um, and there's some weaknesses in there too, that I kind of, my unorganized fashion, I'm like, no, 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 it's time to stop researching and get into the action phase. So we balanced it, but we were able to help her pivot and go, you know what, maybe you need to focus less on like, I'm going to one-on-one life coach you because that's kind of a big general topic. And let's get more specific and say, I'm going to create some sort of done for you project management type systems that anybody can pick up and put into their business. And so just a lot of times going through and talking out and having someone objectively look at what you're doing and go, you're really good at this piece. Why are you not doing this piece more? Because we don't see those things in ourselves. Like in her mind, she was like, well, everybody knows how to use a spreadsheet. I'm like, nope, no, nope, don't <laughs> like spreadsheets. That's me. And so I'm like, no, not everybody does. And you are so naturally gifted at that. You need to help, like, help others with that. Even if it's something as simple as, because she focuses on um, empty nesters, like women who are in that phase of their life where, you know, the kids are grown, they're out of the house. Now it's time to refocus on yourself and what your marriage looks like and what your life looks like. And so I was like, even it's something as simple as like, okay, meal planning, um, let's create a system around that. So now she's pivoted and we've been able to help kind of 
relaunch in a way this other version of the what she envisioned her brand and she's so excited about it so yeah absolutely I, and I think we have to be open to those things um you know you kind of like my journey had I just been like nope I'm going to be a teacher and I'm going to follow this path I wouldn't be where I am today same yeah. thing if I'd been like photography is it I have to be a photographer and nothing else you have to be open to what comes your way and finding out who you are and what you're really good at yeah, that you can help other people with. Yeah. But I could not say it more succinctly than you just did. Um, I think it's so important to be open to the journey and, and take that as part of the experience, right? Um, enjoy what you're doing and see where it leads because like with both of us, it might lead somewhere completely differently that we didn't know was, that was going to be in our future. Yeah. So what continues to inspire you and motivate you? Oh, um, I mean, I'm a student at heart, so I love learning. <laughs> I love to read. Um, I off, off to the side, I have a bookshelf over here that is like floor to ceiling full of like <laughs> business books. I have a different shelf for every like genre of book. Oh so God. I have like that's one that's all of like, I know I'm a little OCD about that kind of stuff, but like, I have one that's all business related. I have one that's just like, just for fun, like cheesy romance novels yes. and like, <laughs> all that kind of so I love to just take things in. Um, I do try to be very, um, intentional about what I'm taking in and what I allow to inspire me. Cause like you said, there's so much out there and I don't want to get distracted by like the shiny things. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think it's easy to look around and be like, Oh, but this person's doing this great thing. And like, maybe I need to go that way. And then you end up off of your path. So I try to really stay focused and, um, allow certain things to come in and inspire me based on what I'm interested in, what I'm excited about and the goals that I have for my business. Yeah. Nice. So what are some examples? If you don't mind sharing, I'd love to hear about somebody else who started working with you and an aha moment that they had big or small, but just something, yeah. you know, the process, cause I do really agree with you completely. Like the process of working with somebody else helps you think about things in a new way. Yeah. So one that comes to mind is, um, she is a photographer and kind of actually here locally. I've met, I've, we're in the same like photography kind of circle and we started working together and she was like, I, she's had never been on social media, had really kind of just a lot of what she was doing was word of mouth. She was, she's an incredible photographer. And so she would have clients that would tell their friends. And so she was kind of booked up pretty well for most of her career. And then COVID hit and everything kind of, she had to sort of start from not scratch, but she moved in the process of that to a new area um, and didn't have her original like sort of word of mouth community. So for her, what we kind of had this aha moment with her was that it's not necessarily about getting onto Instagram or Facebook and just blasting your stuff everywhere. That sometimes it's about building relationships. Like you mentioned kind of that I built my business off of this relationship marketing idea. Mm -hmm. And so for her, I was like, you clearly have a connection to people. You do really well with people. Otherwise your past clients wouldn't keep referring you to all their friends and you wouldn't have had this word of mouth, you know, foundation in your business. We need to use that same thing. And so I said, I think you need to do some either blogging or like podcasting, which she was not for podcasting. So we okay. went blogging. <laughs> um, and I said, and you need to, you know, have this idea that it's not about, I'm going to put myself out there one time and they will come. And so with her kind of that aha moment was, okay, I have to really look at how often am I sharing my business and how am I sharing my business? Mm -hmm. Because in her mind, she was putting herself out there all the time because she was constantly putting out her beautiful photos on social media once we got her social media up. And I had to be like, no, okay, that's, it's a great photo. It's beautiful. It really is. But you can't put up a photo of this really beautiful family and a little cute quote to go with it and expect people to flock into it. They want to connect with who you are as the person they're going to be working with. And so we were able to kind of get her to step out of that space of comfort, I guess, for her, which was hiding behind her photos and really go into, I'm going to share more about who I am. I'm going to share more value. So it's not about, I'm just giving you beautiful photos. Right. It's 
you know, I'm giving you, like we talked about earlier, like a snapshot of this moment in your family's time that you're not going to have again, because your kids are going to grow. Everything's going to change. And so focusing more on how can I serve my audience and not sell to my audience. So those are a couple, like, I mean, there's been a lot of like <laughs> aha moments that, sh- that we've had in that, in that process. But, um, you know, that was kind of the big one was shifting the mindset of, you know, I'm not putting myself out there enough and I'm not putting myself out there in a way that is serving my audience. So I need to adjust to that. Yeah. And I think you said something, a couple of things that were really interesting as well in that you met her where she was. So you said you should do a blog or you should do, be doing podcasting. And one was not comfortable space for her. And so she yeah. chose the other one, something that was, okay. she's like, okay, I can come out behind the camera and I can write. And I can tell people about these stories. Um, And I think that's something we always have to keep in mind when we're working with clients on the marketing side. Some people are really happy to share their story and they have it all down. They have it buttoned up. You know, they'll do anything. They'll be on any interview, any podcast, whatever. But a lot of entrepreneurs are actually introverts and they're not as willing to be front and center and share as much. And so finding those techniques that help your client succeed and figure out like her ahas to get to the next level. I I love that intentionality that you put behind that. Well, and I think that comes from my teaching background a little bit, because, you know, when you're in the classroom, you don't have one learning style. You know, you've got 22 kids in a room that all learn differently and they're all in different places in their learning journey. And so, you know, for 14 years of my career, I was diversifying every single day for all of those different kids. And so I think I've, have sort of unconsciously or subconsciously taken that idea and applied it to my coaching. And that, yeah, like if there is no one size fits all for business, we have to figure out what is it that fits us and who we are as a person. Because like I said before, like writing is not my favorite thing. Like I am much more comfortable having an actual conversation with somebody than I would be trying to put all of this into writing and have it you know, show my personality and be sarcastic at times or be funny at times or, you know, whatever I need to have the conversation piece. Other people like that client in particular, she's way more comfortable and way better at writing things out when she has time to think through and process it and make it just right for her. So that's a big thing I try to tell all of my clients is that when you're looking at like hiring a coach or when you're looking at who you work with, look at the personality type, but also look at someone who is going to say like, let's figure out what works for you. Not let me put you into my mold and my box of how it worked for me, because that may not be the best option for you. And that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now you did also mention like getting her on social media and that's been a big part of your business and your growth. So how have you been able to successfully use social media? And what are some tips and tricks that you would give to the audience? Because I think people are, it's all, it's a confusing subject, right? It is. I mean, every day things seem to be changing and you're not quite sure what's going to work, but um, I'd love to hear what you've used. Yeah. Um, social media is definitely a beast <laughs> and it's an ever evolving, ever changing thing. It's a love hate relationship for sure. <laughs> um, I primarily stick to um, Instagram as my number one. I love Instagram. I think I was originally drawn to Instagram as a photographer just because it was so visual and it really is a great platform still. I mean, a lot of people think that photos going away on Instagram. I don't believe that. I think there still has a place for photo on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I use, I use Facebook as well. I've tried the whole Facebook groups I've done. I mean, I've done it all when it comes to social media. (laughs) Um, I've never really gotten into Twitter or even like, or Snapchat or TikTok, any of those, but Um, I've done LinkedIn, Pinterest, all those things. And so I think the key or a couple of the keys, one is really know where your audience is. You know, I say Instagram is great for me because I'm targeting women in business, moms, um, and they're on Instagram. They're on Facebook. They're not on TikTok. They're not on Snapchat. They're probably not on Twitter or LinkedIn. So I don't put a lot of my effort in those platforms because it's not where my people are. Yeah. Now, if I was trying to target professionals, Mm -hmm. then I would be on LinkedIn or Twitter, but Mm -hmm. you have, so you have to know where your audience is and that's where you need to focus your energy. And so I would say 
pick, you know, one to two social platforms to start with and really dive in and get to know the features of that platform. So I'll use Instagram as an example, since that's what I use a lot of there. And there's multiple aspects to Instagram. It's not just go in and post something and and walk away. There's (laughs) stories, there's feed, there's reels. Uh, there's video there, um, you know, instant or direct messages. There's all these different little facets of it. And each of those serve a different purpose. And so if you go into Instagram or e- even Facebook or any of these platforms and you think I'm just going to go in and I'm going to like, just kind of throw spaghetti at the wall and hope something sticks, you're going to probably end up feeling really frustrated. And so if you go into it going, okay, what's my goal with this content? Mm-hmm. So I'll use an example. If I'm going to go onto Instagram and I'm going to post um, let's say, for example, I'm going to post a, a carousel with some tips on how to build a social media following. Then I'm posting that with the intention of educating my audience that I already have. Yeah. Because if I'm posting it to my feed, I'm educating my audience I already have. If I wanted to reach a larger audience, then I would turn that into a reel. Mm-hmm. Or if I wanted to show the behind the scenes of my day, I'd go in and post on stories. So knowing kind of how each feature of the platform you choose works, it will help you feel a little more successful. You know, if I go and post a story on Instagram and I'm frustrated because it didn't reach 5,000 people, well, it's not meant to, it's only meant to reach those who are already following me and only a small portion of those. So having your expectations kind of in the right place is really helpful. And then I think that I follow the, and I kind of live by this rule in my business, the 80-20 rule. 80% of the time you need to be providing value, building connections, sharing information. um, And then 20% of the time you can be offering products or services. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, like I look at, if I take that into like a five-day week, you know, three of my five posts need to be sharing value or even four of my five posts, depending on, you know, what I'm working on that week. But I'm not going to go in there and post, you know, five times in a week about a product or a service that I offer. Mm-hmm. I'm giving my audience something. I'm helping them accomplish something. You know, an example of the photographer, I told her, I was like, you need to start putting out there. You're working with families with young children who are in a certain location because she's based in one area. So you need to become the person that they go to for like, Hey, there's this really cool event going on in our town or, mm-hmm. Hey, take your kids to this, like, you know, strawberry farm, or you can pick your own strawberries. How fun is that? And share those kinds of things, because now you're more than just a photographer. You're somebody they look to as a resource, an expert, and someone that they want to keep coming back to. Yeah. So that's a sort of a broad, mm-hmm. I could get it like really nitty gritty, but I think that those are kind of key things is know your platform or your audience is really learn that platform, have goals going into it to know like, what do I want to get out of this? What's my purpose of being here? And then providing value so that people want to come back and see more of your content over and over again. Yeah, absolutely. Because they need to know who they're building a relationship with. Yeah. That it's not just, oh, I'm going to buy this thing because without them qualifying you, right? They need to like and trust you. Yes. Um, now, what are, what's like the number one tip? Because I know we've covered a lot of things, but like, what's the number one tip that you'd have for somebody, for a woman who's starting out in business and um, trying to figure number out you know, what she's going to be doing and yeah. how to market it? So I would say my number one tip, oh my gosh. I would say my number one tip is know who you want to work with. Like, who is your audience? Mm -hmm. this was something that I didn't do for a long time in my business. And, um, once I left my teaching career and I was doing my photography business full time, and I was like, okay, I need to really get serious about this. I hired a business coach. And one of the first things she had me do was an ideal client profile. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is dumb. (laughs) Like, why do I need to figure out like what type of, you know, drink my ideal client drinks on the weekends or whatever. But I mean, cause it was like 150 questions that she had me like answer in the, in place of like, of, you know, in the mindset of my ideal client. Yeah. And I really pushed on it and I pushed on it and pushed on it. And then finally I did it. And it wasn't until even like I was done working with this business man or this business coach that I went back to that. And I was like, oh, I think it finally makes sense now Ooh. because everything you do in your business needs to be aimed at 
serving her. Mm-hmm. And I say her just because, you know, most of the time consumers are, are female. So in the case of like my photography business, I really, at the time I was shooting weddings and I had to get very specific on, I was not aiming my marketing at like the 22 year old bride whose, you know, parents were paying for everything. I really was aiming at like the 30 something bride mm-hmm. who was getting married a little bit, I say a little bit older, but you know, who's <laughs> had, a, had a career and had like finances in place to help pay for some of this herself and really valued some of the things that she was looking into. That's completely different marketing messaging than it is to the 22 year old who wants like the perfect Pinterest wedding. (laughs) So I, you know, once you really know like who it is that you are serving and what are their pain points, you know, if I'm talking about that 30 year old bride, um, you know, a lot of her pain points were things like, how can I do this without, you know, spending a ton of money? Cause maybe we want to buy a house or we're, you know, we're a little bit on a budget. Um, How can I include more of my family in these things? Um, You know, how can I make sure that I make this um, meaningful for my family members and not just about my fiance and I, you know, there's all these different things. So you want to make sure you're, you're putting out messaging that is speaking directly to that person and they go, Oh my gosh, that was made just for me. Mm -hmm. So like when I put out you know, uh, uh, at the time I was putting out a blog post, it'd be like 10, um, wedding venues in my area that are perfect for intimate, small family weddings. Well, that's speaking directly to her, not to the 22 year old who wants to have this big fancy, like ballroom wedding with 300 guests. So really know your client, know exactly like what it is they struggle with. And then you can tailor everything you do to her. And it's just going to make you be that much more appealing. And I will say one more quick last thing is that a lot of times people are nervous about doing this because they're like, well, but what if I still want the 22 year old bride to hire me because I need money? That doesn't mean you're necessarily eliminating those other people. Like if you still are putting out messaging, I kind of describe it as like a spider web. And if your ideal client is in the middle of the spider web and you have all these little strings coming off. And all of those strings are different aspects of your ideal client. So it could be, you know, financial aspects or relationship aspects or location. Some of those little strings that come off are still going to like snag somebody else, Mm -hmm. you know, like they're still going to be drawn in because of one piece of it, but all together, your ideal client is all of those pieces in one. So that's kind of how I try it. You're not eliminating people. You're just getting really specific in who you're talking to. Exactly. And you might find that you don't need those other people even in your web because you're getting enough business and the right kind of business from the people that are your exact target. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So let's talk about being working moms. So my daughter is going into high school. So I'm I'm kind of past some of the stuff, but it's still like, she's not driving yet. So I've, you know. (laughs) To coordinate with like the school drop off, school pickup, what activities does she have? So, okay, am I doing a meeting? Like, do I have internet from tennis or whatever, wherever it is? Like, <laughs> exactly. If I have yeah. to do meetings, I do. How do you know? I think it's, um, and it's not, of course, just moms, but we are both moms. Um, so I know some dads who also manage the, the care primarily, but how do you manage it? Oh, well, first of all, I. A lot, there's a while back, I was talking to a lady one time and I used the word balance. I was like, I'm just trying to balance it all. And she's like, Indra, there is no balance. She goes, it's about (laughs) like finding harmony. She Mm -hmm. goes, at some point, certain things are going to take more presence the other. She goes, when you say the word balance, it's, you think of a scale that's equal on both sides. Right. And in real life, like it's never going to be equal on both sides. It's, there's going to be times when your business requires more attention. There's going to be times when your kids require more attention. And so that really helped me change the mindset behind it. And I like, we're currently getting ready for back to school. My kids have been home all summer. And so I just knew going into it, this is a season of my family is going to take a little bit more priority because I want to do things with them. I want to go to the water park. I want to go on vacations. I want to spend time with them. And so I'm going to spend a little bit more time with them and a little less time on my business. And then when they go back to school, it'll kind of flip flop. I'll be able to spend, you know, the daytime with my, on my business and have time with them in the evenings. So I, the mindset shift there was a big piece of it. 
Um, so my girls are six and 10 and they still actually, for the most part, enjoy spending time together. So it's been (laughs) really nice because like right now they're entertaining themselves playing in the playroom and, um, you know, they can kind of follow the rules. They know when the doors close the office, you don't come in. Um, and it's really fun too, because they want to see what I do. So like before getting on this call with you, they were asking all these questions, like, well, what kind of call is it? Is she, is she asking you the questions or are you asking her the questions <laughs> and what are y'all going to talk about? And so it's really fun too, because I want them to be part of my business. Yeah. And so as much as I can, I try to kind of let them be here. I mean, obviously not while I'm doing this, but <laughs> you know, I let them try to be part of it and that's been really fun too. And then it takes the pressure off of me to feel like I need to have it be separate because it's all so yeah. intertwined. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, th- I mean, I think the biggest thing is just the mindset shift and then finding, like I said, same thing with business. There's no one way to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just about, you know, finding the way that works for you. And if that means that you work after your kids go to bed and your daytime is spent with them, then that's what works for you. Um, and everything's a season. I mean, it, like for the longest, this last year was my first year that my youngest was in kindergarten. And mm-hmm. so it was my first year not having any kids at home during the day. Wow. And so I, prior to that, I had to just remind myself, like, this is just the season. And at some point she'll be in school full time and I will have my days to do what I want to do. Um, you know, you're coming up to a season where once you're old, once your daughter's driving, you won't have to play yeah. chauffeur anymore. And then you'll be like, what do I do with my time? <laughs> so everything's a season. Everything eventually evolves and changes. So just recognize the season you're in and work with it and till it moves on to the next one. And I just wrote down, there's, there is no balance. There's only harmony. Um, I think that's really important for us to remember, um, that and the seasons. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. So how do people find you on social media? What's the easiest way to find your, well, your podcast and to work with you? Yeah. So everything is at Girl Means Business. Like I said, I'm on Instagram primarily. Um, So you can find me at Girl Means Business on Instagram. Send me a message. Let me know you heard about me here on this podcast. Um, And then if you go to my website, just girlmeansbusiness.com, that's sort of my home base. So you'll find um, all the links for podcasts, any resources I have. Um, You can find all my social links there as well. And then a contact form if you want to email me. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and Thank is there you. anything new and exciting coming up for you, like a new offering or? Yeah, well, so I'm really excited. Um, I, a couple, about two years ago, I met with a girl. I don't know if you've ever used the Clubhouse app. Oh, yeah. This, yeah. Okay. So it was a social platform. We met on there and through this podcast swap room, we ended up doing a podcast swap and we became really, really good friends. She lives in Denver. I'm in Texas. And over the last two years, we've just kind of become what we call business besties. So we're actually getting ready to partner up and we are creating sort of a um, community space for other women entrepreneurs to come and build connections and relationships and network and have resources and education sort of all in one place. So hopefully our goal is to have that launched this fall. Um, And so we're still kind of in the works on that, but I'm really excited for what I think that it will be for women who are building their business. Awesome. And I'm imagining that we'll be able to go to Girl Means Business, Instagram, or the website and get more information. There'll be a link to follow. Awesome. Perfect. So my last question I always ask, one of my last two is, do you have a favorite quote or mantra? Oh, a favorite quote or mantra. Um, So this is going to seem really funny. My mom growing up, she ran my family's business Mm -hmm. um, and she always had a sign on her, she had a bulletin board next to her desk with just like kind of random stuff on it. Mm -hmm. And there was this sign that always said, well-behaved women rarely make history. Mm -hmm. And that has always stuck with me. And at the time I was like, that means you have to be like this really like rebellious (laughs) go against society. And I was like, no, I think it really just means that you blaze your own trail, you know, like I spent a large part of my life following a path that other people kind of had laid out for me. And it wasn't until I was in my mid twenties, I was like, no, I think I need to look at like, what do I want out of my life and not what do other people want out of my life? 
So that kind of, that quote has kind of evolved to take on new meanings in different phases of my <laughs> life, but it's, it's a fun one that I always kind of keep in the back oh, of yes. my mind. Yeah. I love that. And I like your interpretation of it too. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, Kendra, thank you so much for coming on today. Really appreciated having this conversation with you. I'm going to, and I've been doing this a little more, I'm going to ask our audience members to go check out your podcast, leave it a review, subscribe, do the same thing for your band Amplified if you haven't done it here. And you know what? I'll be back again next week with another episode. Uh, Kendra, we'll have all of your information in the show notes for everybody to find you. And thank you again so much for being on the show today. Thank you. This was amazing. Absolutely. Want more? Check out amplifywithannica.com or follow me on socials at Amplify with Annika. My Wrangler jeans from Walmart are legit my favorite go-to pants. They got that slim cut that's always fresh for going out. Hey, what's up? They're durable enough, even for my shift. And stretchy enough for when I want to kick back and chill with the movie. So basically, they can do it all, and on my budget. I mean, come on. You really can't beat all that. Shop your Wrangler pants at Walmart. Stop using five apps to manage your marketing. Meet Simplified One. It's an AI-powered all-in-one platform for creators and small businesses to design, make videos, and publish content to all social media platforms. Visit simplified.com and use Annika30 to save 30% today.